Hello everybody, the way through here. Today I'm going to be showing you how to solve the void cube. So this is a, a Rubik's void puzzle. Uh, so it's basically a newer version of the void cube. And I'm going to show you how to solve it because it is a little bit harder than a normal Rubik's cube. Of course you'll need to know how to solve a normal Rubik's cube to solve this. And you have to memorize. Uh, not quite an algorithm, but just kind of a way to do it. So first I'm just going to go through the solving process and how it's different without centers. If you've already gotten the parity at the end, then you can just uh, press this annotation right here, or uh, the time code in the description if I don't have it yet. And then I'll just uh, show you the parity from there. And so, once you have it all scrambled up, You would basically begin the way you'd expect, only uh, instead of doing it around the center, you just choose any side to do it around. So you do the cross. Uh, but the difficult thing is, since this doesn't have a regular color scheme, uh, you may actually have to use the corners to help you figure out which uh, uh, pieces uh, go in the right spots. And so I'm just going to start with this piece so it's uh, uh, orange and yellow. And so I'll find a corner that also has orange and yellow on it. And... Yeah, I put it into place right next to it, and I see that the color next to here needs to be blue. And so, here's the blue one, and I'll just, uh, let's see, I can put it in like that. And so we have that part, and then we'll find the next corner that goes with uh, blue and yellow. So that would be right somewhere, right here, okay. And then next to that comes this red pink uh, e color. And if we find that, it's right here. And so you can take these out. These are basically just intuitive moves that you can figure out. You probably already know from your beginner's method. And then the last one is obviously green because it's the only one that can go in. And then you can just put in the rest of the corners as you would normally, like that. Okay, and then we have the first layer. And then what I like to do from here is kind of like rotate this around to see if I can get any of these pieces to match up. Because it really doesn't matter which uh, way you start edge pairing with. And so, yeah, I found one that matched up here. And so I'll find the piece that does not have red on it because red is opposite uh, yellow. And here, this piece, and I can just put it in right here using my beginner's method algorithm. And it's in right there. This one, I'll know a method to swap that, and so put it in. So basically you're just solving the cube as you normally would, just pretending that the centers are there. But you just have to uh, assume that uh, there's a center there, even though there really isn't. So you just continue on doing it until your last step. Okay, here. So you may end up with something that you don't normally get on a normal Rubik's Cube, like in this case right here, where I have two corners that need to be switched. And depending on your beginner's method, uh, you may either do corners first or edges uh, first. In mine, I do edges first, and it's actually going to be a little bit harder for me, but since I know some PLLs, it should be pretty easy. So what I'm going to try and get is, so on the top layer, there's two edge pieces that need to be switched. And so two edge pieces also uh, translates to two uh, uh, corner pieces being switched. So I know that if I do an algorithm like this, and then one like this, and if I can turn it, uh, then I will now get two of them that are switched like this. If you do not know an algorithm to get translate two corner pieces into two edge pieces, you can actually do a couple of things. Uh, one thing is if you know how to solve a 4x4, four four, you'll know the edge parity algorithm, which is like this, and two back to, up to left, up to right, up to, uh, right, up to. Front to right, front to left, back to right to, like that. And if you just apply that to the cube, it will actually do that just that. It'll switch these two and these two. And so if you just rotate these real quick, just like we do in the beginner's method, that algorithm will now switch these two. Another way you can switch these two and also switch these two is uh, you just pretend as if... Uh, is you just do the beginner's method algorithm where you have these two correct and these two incorrect and so you're basically just switching these two so that's just and then and you see these two swapped and then you just pretend that all these edges are solved and then just uh, solve it as you normally would 
and you'll have just these two swapped at the end. And if you really can just cannot find one of these methods that work for you, you can basically just redo the whole last layer, only uh, having these two switched. And so, I'm not going to show you how that looks like, but I know an algorithm, a PLL that looks like this. And that's what I use. So we have these two pieces that need to be switched. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to show you an intuitive method to do it, and I'll show you how and why it works and everything. And then I'll show you a big long, big long algorithm to do that. And then second, I'll show you a uh, advanced method that I came up with, which is basically doing the same algorithms, only with finger tricks and stuff. And I'll also show you an algorithm for that one. And so make sure to watch all the way through if you want to be able to do it quickly. So what we're going to do is we're going to get each of these pieces in the middle layer uh, flipped backwards. And so what we're going to do is we're first going to flip one of them. So the parity piece right here. We're just going to move it into place like this, since it'll be backwards like this. And we're just going to turn this around. And we actually do an algorithm like this. We turn the middle layer, turn the back layer, turn the middle layer back, and turn the back layer back. And that'll actually turn all these. If you just want an algorithm to do this, it'll be M, so like that, uh, D2, M prime, D2, and then M. And you see all these are like this. And make sure that you have the beginning two parity pieces on the top like that. So on a regular Rubik's Cube, you can do this. The reason uh, the reason this is, is when you're actually doing the algorithm before, you're actually switching each of these centers by one, which you can't do on a normal Rubik's Cube. And switching each of the middle layer centers by one also equals uh, switching two edges, which also equals switching two corners, of course. So how you solve this, you may have actually heard of an algorithm called the super flip, which you can do on a normal Rubik's Cube. Basically, it's middle layer, top, middle layer, top, middle layer, top, middle layer, top. And I'll switch these two and these two. But the way we have them is like this all the way around, not like this. So what you can do to make this look like this is just do F U prime F prime. And so now it may look a little bit messy, but the pieces that need to be switched are these two, this one, and that one, which is the same as on this. And so from here, you can just do a super flip as you would normally. Put the algorithm up here. And it's just like this. And you can undo those moves, which would be F U F prime. And you see you have it solved. So a basic algorithm that you can uh, use to solve the whole thing is just this. M D2 M prime D2 M and so you got see you have all that and then F U prime F prime and then M U prime M U prime M U prime M U prime just do that four times and then F U F prime and then you'll have it solved. Just make sure you have the pieces in parity on the top initially. Now if this method works for you, you're not really trying to get it fast or anything, then you can just uh, leave right now, but there's actually another way to do it that takes advantage of finger tricks. So like, doing the top layer like this instead of like uh, that, and then instead of doing the middle layer like that, doing it like this with your back finger. And if you don't yet do finger tricks or anything like that, uh, then these, this method won't help you much, but it does actually help in the long run. So this optimal way to do it, you actually start uh, having the two parity pieces on the bottom, and it takes advantage of using your middle finger to uh, do the middle layer. And so these are the algorithms I came up with. So it's uh, M prime U two M U two M prime, and you see you have all these flipped. And then you see actually, uh, if on a normal Rubik's cube, instead of doing this. Uh, to do a super flip, you can actually do with your back finger. I'm not that good with finger tricks, but instead of flipping these two and these two, it flips these two and these two. And so you're going to have to modify your solving a little bit. An easy way to do this is just do F, U, F prime, and then Y2, so just turn the whole cube around like that. And then that, 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 so the super flip, turn it back around. And then F, U prime, F prime. 
So, if you want to see the whole long algorithm, I'll put it up here. I'll also put some of those algorithms in the description for you. And so that's basically it. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments below. Uh, I'll see you next time. Bye!